Hey everybody, so I brought my telescope into the living room so we could get a little bit more light on it. And I wanted to um, kind of give you a quick um, description of what it is. This is basically a reflector telescope on a Dobsonian base, so it's a Newtonian reflector if you want to get all geeky about it. And the nice thing about these telescopes is they're known as light buckets, so it's the best way to get aperture on the mirror for your dollar. There's all kinds of models of telescopes. Some of them are very expensive, some of them not so much. This one's probably in the latter camp. And what I like about this telescope is that it's very beginner friendly. You can use it as a manual, some call them affectionately dumb Dobbs where you don't have to do particularly anything to get going. There's no star alignments necessary if you don't want to use the Intelescope system. You don't have to set up a tripod. You really just bring it out to the end of your driveway or to the dark site and it goes. This telescope weighs about 42 pounds all put together. The base is about 20, the tube is about 20, and then you've got your accessories, that big finder scope there. And it's really been easy for me to just kind of bring it out and about to um, to dark sites or, or, or just my neighborhood if I was gonna show people the moon. My kids love looking through it at the moon. Um, what you'll notice is that it's got the little hand controller there, but if you don't turn it on, this is just a basic Dobsonian telescope. Uh, as much as the X-T8 or the X-T8 Plus, you don't have to use it if you don't want to, which is kind of cool. So I get a lot of questions on the Intelliscope system, and it's very simple to use. Orion has it on their site, but let me just show you how this works. So assuming we want to get the push-to functions of this Dobsonian telescope going, we'll give it some power, and it's going to say the name, press uh, enter, and we're going to point it vertical. So you have to make sure that your telescope is completely vertical, because if it's not, it has no point of reference. So I'll go ahead and I'll give it a vertical pull here until it gets that stopper. And I'm going to go ahead and say enter. And what it's going to do is it's going to check for alignment stars now. So it's asking for Arcanar. I'm going to go to, let's just say Vega. Okay, we put Vega in there. Uh, now we'll move it and we'll look for a second star. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm just kind of cheating here because obviously we're not outside. So let's go to Sirius. Okay, so it's got both of them there. And what it's going to now want is select target. So I'm going to go with target and we'll just do M042, the Orion Nebula. And notice what it's giving me is it wants me to go 23 degrees to the right. Getting there now. And then, oop, a little bit further over. So you can see that you're getting hotter, warmer, colder. There we go, we're right at the altitude, and then we'll lower it just a bit. We're almost where we need to be. There we go. So if we were at night and we were pointing this, it would show us the Orion Nebula right now. And it really is that simple. One nice thing is zero, the tour function. A lot of uh, automated telescopes have this, but you can actually get lots of objects of interest. It'll follow, uh, well, it'll find planets, stars, galaxies, clusters, everything, NGC items, Messier catalog. Um, and once you're done, you just turn it off. This is powered by a nine volt. So I can just turn this off and it's done. It's back to a regular telescope. I could just Velcro this to the case. So you'll notice here I've got the dual speed focuser upgrade on this telescope as well as the uh, right angle correct image finder scope that it comes with. Sometimes I use a red dot finder, sometimes I use a uh, Telrad, but you don't have to. You can use what it came with. I just put the original scope on there so you'd see what Orion ships it with. The dual speed finder is really nice because this is your course finding and then this little black circle uh, dial is your fine tuning. So when you're, you know, honing in on a deep space object and you really want to get the focus locked in tight, you can use that. I have a nine millimeter Plossel in there just because I was looking at Saturn this morning. I have a couple of zooms and other eyepieces I use as well. Nice thing about the dual speed finder is that it's a slight upgrade over the single speed, but it gives you a lot of flexibility. It's the same uh, focuser that they, they put on the um, X-T8 Plus. So it's a really nice thing to have. Something a lot of people wonder about this telescope is that you look at it from the front. So light goes into the tube and it hits the primary mirror, then bounces back to the secondary mirror and goes in through that focuser. 
uh, right over here. Now, if you look down this telescope, you're not gonna see any lenses. What you see at the very bottom is just a mirror. And there's a picture of my iPhone. And that's the secondary mirror that's kind of hanging out right on this part here, which goes right into the focuser. So very simple organic design here. Uh, hasn't changed a whole lot in 500 years. And that's pretty much how you see the stars and the moon and the planets and so on. One thing to keep in mind that scares a lot of uh, reflector owners is that these telescopes sometimes need collimation. But I gotta tell you, I've collimated this once and it was with the help of an Astro Club member, and it's held on ever since. The way to know if your telescope is collimated pro properly or not is if you focus on a star and then you defocus on that star, you should be getting a little halo donut ring around that star. And if it starts to look like an oval or a line or something that's not quite a concentric circle, you may be out of collimation. Now, most of the time, that means the primary mirror, that's the big one on the bottom, needs to be slightly aligned. The secondary mirror in practice by the focuser rarely, if ever, needs collimation. But something to keep in mind when you use these telescopes. One nice thing about refractors and to a lesser extent Schmidt Cassegrains is that you don't often need to collimate them. You know, I own a Schmidt Cassegrain Celestron telescope and there's so many accessories for that thing, it's crazy. The nice thing about Dobsonian telescopes is there are some, but you don't have to buy $500 worth of equipment after. There's a Dobsonian dolly, which is basically a little wheelie cart that this can go on, so you can, you know, bring it down your driveway. It adds bulk, but it does add height, which is kind of nice if you're tall. I'm not very tall, but I sometimes use that, so if I don't want to sit at the telescope, rather stand. They also have something called a Dob pod, which is basically a table. There's all sorts of storage bags for this and so on and so forth. There's solar filters that you can get that fit the top. Um, but it's not anything like a Schmidt Cassegrain where you need a battery and a dew shield and oh, I don't know, there's lights and computer tracking. That's all optional for this uh, telescope and you can get going just with what you see here. So I hope that's kind of shown you a little bit about the telescope now. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I love this telescope. I happen to own a uh, Schmidt Cassegrain and a refractor, but I find myself using the Dobsonian quite a bit. It's just easy to grab and go. Sometimes I use the Intelescope, sometimes I don't. Probably half the time, depends what I'm looking for. But it's a great telescope for looking at the moon and the planets, the stars, and so on. Uh, one thing that's funny about this telescope is that online it has this like bronze brown color, but as you'll see in the video, it's kind of more like a space gray tube. It's very handsome, I would say. And this telescope, uh, I've had it for a number of years and it just works really well. Um, you can get them used for under $500 if you find the right seller. It just depends. New they're getting up there. They're $800 new, but you don't have to pay $800. A lot of times you can find telescopes that are being unloaded. Um, one more thing I'll add to the telescope is, uh, I'll add to my review is that the telescope does weigh 40 pounds. So consider if you want to get a six inch one that's a little bit lighter or a 10 inch one that's quite a bit wider. Um, the base will get a little bigger on the 10. It, I think it stays the same on the 6. You just have to find the telescope that works for you. I successfully load this into my SUV just along the back of the tube and the base can sit in the trunk on the way to any dark side I want to take it to. I often observe in the Florida Everglades. So yeah, if you have any questions particularly about the scope, let me know in the comments. I hope this review has been helpful and uh, don't forget to like the video and uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks.